Ego will tell us about tight, tight semi-definite program relaxations for polynomial optimization. Okay. Thank Brunt, thank the organizers. So, so uh, as you can see, the topic of my uh, <laughs> of my uh, my talk is about uh, tight relaxations for polynomial optimization. Well, it's not specially about uh, hyperbolic polynomials, but however, if we are optimistic, uh, we can think <laughs> hyperbolic polynomials as a special case of polynomials. Then we apply. Okay. So. Uh, so what, what is the point actually, well, as you see, the polynomial optimization is, uh, you can see it's uh, this question. So, so suppose we have, uh, well, first of all, minimize fx. So it's, uh, this is called the objective. And we have uh, the constraints. Well, in life, we might have both, I mean, well, equalities and inequalities. But here, I mean, for, for convenience, let's consider the inequality case. So, I mean, of course, in this talk, we assume everything are polynomials, okay? So this is called the polynomial optimization. So, and x is n-dimensional vector, okay? So, but as you can see, this one is a special case of nonlinear program. So that means nonlinear program is very broad. So minimize a nonlinear function subject to <laughs> all kinds of constraints. So it's a special case of nonlinear program. But however, since we have a strong properties here, so the, uh, everything is a polynomial, so we want better. We want better conclusions. So especially for polynomial optimization, we want some kind of uh, the problem to be solved globally, for example, uh, to find global minimizers. But of course, well, the problem is, well, you can use this show, I mean, it's I mean, hard, actually, it's difficult. So that is, uh, is the, yeah. But what I'd like to mention that, I mean, for uh, polynomial optimization, I mean, also, also for nonlinear program, to find the local minimizer is still hard. It's still MP hard. So actually, well, I mean, if, if uh, in many conferences, many people they get excited <laughs> when they are okay. I find a local minimizer, so it's home, it looks like so. But however, that is uh, is not true. So to find local minimizer, well, you, I mean, in competition maybe in, in practice maybe easier, okay? But theoretically, it's still difficult. So, well, to solve polynomial optimization, well, I mean, that exists a. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, why, um, huge, I mean, huge many uh, methods. But the, the one I like most is uh, the one that is proposed by LaSalle, that is called the Moment SOS Hierarchy, or is called uh, LaSalle Hierarchy. <laughs> I don't know what is the best name. So it's, uh, so I mean, usually that means, well, you can actually say the two versions, one is the Moment version, one is the, the dual version, they sub -like squares. So, so the basic idea, you, how do you represent a polynomial that is non-active on a set? That use, for example, use positive standard, using well, positive standard sets. Or there is another one where we minimize, for example, we convexify this. We minimize the linear function over the convex hull, over the vector of monomials. That is another version that is called moment version. But uh, interestingly, these two versions are dual to each other. So, so, you call, so that's why it's, it's, uh, usually we all call it the moment SOS hierarchy. And for the moment has a hard we actually it has actually one nice properties. The first one is uh, asymptotic convergence. So that means here we assume but how there is a condition for the Archimedean condition. So that means the quadratic module generated by these constraining polynomials are, is, is Archimedean. I mean this kind of something is essentially to require the feasible set is compact. So that is after that that is uh, I mean, the style proved the asymptotic convergence. That means we apply a sequence of relaxations, and each relaxation gives a low bound of the optimal value. And the low bound converges to the, the true minimum value. And the proof actually uses Pudina's positive sense. That means the polynomial is non actually it has a representation using sum of squares. But actually, well, uh, actually, we have. Uh, but a conclusion, that is finite convergence, actually that means why I mean why you consider this as a nonlinear program. So we can write down the optimality conditions. We have first order conditions, suited complementarity, and uh, second order conditions. So under some, for example, second order sufficiency conditions and the strict complementarity, then this hierarchy, the moment as of us hierarchy, so we are converged finitely, so finitely many steps. So that means if the relaxation order is high enough, then then the problem is solved exactly. <coughs> but here, we assume the STP is solved exactly. But if the STP is not solved exactly, then well, we cannot do anything. <laughs> well, there's no conclusion. So, 
And uh, oh, uh, well, at beyond this, well, I'd like to say that is uh, you usually, I mean, uh, to solve this optimization, you usually, I mean, when we apply the relaxation, well, we can get a low bound, but of course, in life, when we, we, we are usually we are more interested in the minimizers. So the minimizers can also be extracted, so that means it can be actually the truncated moment problem, it can be solved by uh, singular value decompositions and Cholesky. And, so, but however, there is also an assumption. I mean, say, I mean, well, when we talk about the polynomial optimization, we must make some reasonable assumptions. For example, in this case, we need to assume the number of minimizers is finite. So if the if the set of minimizers is infinite, then I don't know, it's very difficult. I don't, no, I don't know how to handle it. Let me say. So these are the, the advantages. Actually. Well, but of course, there are also some uh, disadvantages. So the first one is uh, the computational complex. Uh, Computation expense will heavily depends on the order, the relaxation order. So the relaxation order is also the degree. So when we apply a representation for the sum of squares uh, type of representation, so we need to set, set up a degree. So, so that degree is called the relaxation order. So if the usual one, when you, well, we apply the lowest order relaxation, it works very well. But however, so radically, to solve the problem, usually we, we need the, the relaxation order to be high. I mean, well, yeah, I would say it, it depends on, on, on the problems, but uh, theoretically, it can be very high. So this is uh, the computational uh, issue. Another one is about the, <laughs> it's about the theoretical disadvantage. So that is uh, it, discovered by Klaus Schweider. So he, he always has very amazing results. So he, so he proved that if the dimension of the, of the feasible set is three or higher, okay? So, okay, so for the, so this case, then there always exists some bad polynomial. So they always extract some some polynomial, uh, some bad polynomial, so that this hierarchy will fail to have finite convergence. For example, we consider for the cubic case, for the, I mean for the cubic case, I mean for the cubic dimension case. So minimize, for example, minimize the Morgan polynomial over the unit ball. So it does not have finite convergence. Okay. But however, well, if we use the, the, the software like globally poly, you, you will convert in two steps. So the reason is a numerical issue. So because using a multiple polynomial, you degree, a polynomial degree six, right? If we extract the linear moment, you, you, <laughs> you get to turn, turn to the negative, that's very easy. But however, that is, that is not mathematically true, okay? So, but numerically, we, we, we don't see that, so that's why, okay? So these are the... I would say that means um, the lowest order relaxation usually is often tight. So it actually is, uh, it, for the most of the time it works very well. But however, the, all these kind of things usually for the, the worst case, that is hard. Okay, now what can we do? It looks like <laughs> the polynomial is done. Well, actually, well, so, actually when we think about it, actually, there is still a lot of issues that we need to consider. So the first one was the asymptotical convergence. For example, we need the Archimedean condition. So the question, essentially it requires the feasible set is compact. So if the feasible set is, for example, is unbounded, for example, minimize the polynomial in the entire space, how can we do? So that, 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 that is, but in this case, then we don't have convergence. So the last one is uh, the, well, as we observe, so the computational cost de depends heavily on the degree. So that means on the relaxation order. So, so this uh, usually, well, in, the, for, in computation, we often want, we need to try our best to avoid high degree relaxations. Okay, we need to avoid that. But there is an issue for fixed relaxation order. For example, the lowest one. What is the best relaxation that we can construct? So th that is kind of issue, right? So, but I mean, yeah, I mean still, like, we cannot avoid, but however, in practice, we, can we, we should try our best. What is the best one that we can do? So, also that is why also also is another way concern is about uh, the convergence. So that means the, the moment that's all that is actually is proved to have finite convergence if there are some. I mean, it's, we still need the Archimedean condition, okay? Plus some optimality condition. So especially about the, the strict complementarity or the second order sufficiency conditions. So they, I mean, these conditions are from nonlinear program. So if they are if, if they are satisfied, then okay, we, uh, we we can prove they have a finite convergence. But how is it fail? So what can we do? So here is the question. I mean, the, the third concept is about cell radically. So can we construct the, 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 uh, a new hierarchy that always have a finite convergence for all the objectives? 
So that is, uh, I mean, this one is uh, about self right? So, I mean, is that actually what uh, the topic of today actually is? I'd like to to present some work about these three issues. Well, first, let's review. I mean, uh, let's review the polynomial optimization. So, let's say we consider first, we consider this <laughs> as a general nonlinear program. Okay, we don't use any properties of polynomials. We consider it as a, as a nonlinear program. So, let's say what can we do? So, in nonlinear program, if you take any optimization course, then you will see that is a KKD condition. So what the KKD condition that means is called a Kalash Kuantaka condition. So that means you suppose we have a local minimizer, okay? Local minimizer U. So if we have, for example, the linear independence constraint and quantification condition, so it's called LICQC. Then we have this. Then we have Lagrangian multipliers set by this. So that means the gradient of the objective is a linear combination of the gradients of the constraining functions. Okay, and the coefficients lambda, lambda one through lambda, um, they are called Lagrangian multipliers. And of course, where well, you can see if the constraint is active, then lambda may be positive. But if the constraint is inactive, that means lambda must be zero. So that means the product must be zero. So it's called the complementarity condition. And of course, here with the inequality constraints, then Lagrangian multipliers are required to be non-active. Okay, you want to be non-active. But of course, if we have equation constraints, then lambda can be positive, can be negative, okay, it doesn't matter. So, well, here is the LICQC. So actually, this condition can be weakened, it's called the MF condition. That means it can be weakened, but you should have, but actually, algebra is, uh, well, so it's different, but however, the difference is not that much. <laughs> okay, so, you, so, so that is called the, uh, okay, so that means, um, so these are the, others, I mean, very basic ones from nonlinear programming. So, the, so this is, is and uh, well, so, well, for the active constraints, if the lambda are positive, then we, we said you have strict complementarity. Sorry, Joan, this, yes. I mean, the strict complementarity is, is when for every i, the lambda is positive, or yes. the ci is positive. Well, if ci is positive, then lambda mu must be zero. So if ci is positive, then it's active, then we don't care. So I mean, you say, you say, suppose all the constraints are inactive. So that means all ci are positive. So that means we still say the, uh, the strict homogeneity holds. Or if we have equation constraints, then lambda there is no sign. So we still say the strict complementarity. So so we only cares about the inequality constraints that are active. So so this. So these are called the I mean the, the standard ones from the nonlinear program. So okay. Now let's see. KKD condition actually well, you can the condition is I mean it, it's simple, you see. So you see. So so what well, the condition is uh, so I mean, these are the equations, okay? So you can see, if x, so for KD condition, so if, the, if, x, if the value of x is known, is given, then to determine the lambda, that is easy, right? That is uh, it's a linear program, actually, right? You want to find lambda satisfy these equations plus these non-negative ones, it's a linear program. Or if, for example, under, say, LICUC, so we just need to solve a linear equation. That's it, so it's, it's simple, but however, yeah, we can do more actually. Yeah, but how is you uh, remember the difficult optimization? We want to find x. We don't know the value of x. So that's the difficulty, right? So in this, what can we do? Actually, there is actually there is a, actually is a is a mathematical question. So is suppose what well, we suppose uh, I mean f and c are all given polynomial functions. But here we don't know x. Okay. Now the, now the issue is we want to say so here is the question: to, How can we represent Lagrangian multipliers in terms of x? So how do we determine in, in the lambda in terms of the, 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 the critical point x? So here the question is, does there exist a polynomial p? p1 through pm, so that each lambda 1 equals p1, lambda n equals pm. So that this one is true for all critical points. So if x is not a critical point, so of course we should forget it. I mean, it's, that's not possible. But how is, well, you can see, you will see if, if, if x is given, you will see this one, this equation is linear in lambda. So we can, well, we might nature to think, well, if we have linear equation in lambda, what can we do? We just reverse it, right? So we get the rational representation. That is automatic, I mean, it's obvious too. So, but how is, okay, here, I mean, is, well, we, I mean, in computation, especially in optimization, we don't like, especially for me, I don't like the rational function. It's not a fun, I mean, it's, okay. <laughs> well, I want a polynomial, okay? I want a polynomial. So it's, but then it's, it can, can be expressed lambda as a polynomial functions over the critical points, so. 
But if this one is true, then we can see that there's a lot of the, 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 there are big advantage. You can see. So first, the KKD conditions can be simplified. For example, we don't need lambda. You just plug it in, right? So we eliminate variables. So that is that is one advantage. Another one is we also can use the sign condition. So that means lambda they are non-active. So that means we, we, can, we can pose new conditions. So in polynomial optimization, the more constraints, the better. If we, I mean, in nonlinear programming, that's bad. But we, we want less, as less as possible because they, they, they cannot handle the general case. But however, in polynomial optimization, we never need to worry about that. If you have more equation or more constraints, that's better. So we can apply stronger relaxations. So that. So how we do actually that is uh, actually that is possible. So how we do so that means uh, so so the main result. So I'd like to present is that. So okay. So this is a KKT. So here is the first conclusion is there always exist polynomials so that the Lagrangian multiplier can be expressed as a polynomial function for all critical points. <coughs> but how about where so the free lunch of so some assumption? The option is very general. So is so the constraint in polynomial is non-singular. I mean in age by geometry, people like non-singular right? <laughs> we always assume that actually. But this is but it's a very weak assumption. Okay. And then what we can do, of course, once we get the this representative, we just plug it in. Okay? So we can we can remove, I mean for this equation, we can remove lambda, okay? And then we also get this new inequality constraints. And then for this once we get more more constraints, that's better. We can apply the moment as well as the hierarchy. We can get more. That means that we get tighter relaxation. So that's the basic idea. So in polynomial optimization, okay, we should never worry about more constraints. The more, the better. <laughs> Okay, how do we do that? So actually, well, K is the issue. <coughs> we observe this. So I mean, I mean the KD condition can be summarized as this: a single equation. So if we, well, you suppose x is, is, is uh, uh, suppose x is given, <coughs> suppose x is given, the lambda can be determined by this equation. You see, the first one is uh, you know is about uh, the gradients. But okay, well, so here the 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 the, the, the trick here is that we need to apply the all complementarity condition. So that means you lambda, you know, the, the product of the inequality constraints and lambda is equal to zero. So we just put them together. So we get a new anyway, you get this new matrix is called Cx. Okay, so Cx. So for what is the, the, the well? First, I'd like to introduce the definition of non-singularity. Non-singularity is LICQC over the complex space. Okay, that's the point. So what the CQC that means we consider this. So that means this constraint in tuple is uh, non-singular if the rank of this matrix is is full rank. So this one has m columns and it has m plus n rows. So the number of rows is always bigger than the number of columns. So this one is always equal to m. So this so the, the non-singularity requires the rank of this matrix is equal to m for all complex points. So this means that if you have say actually, this one actually is equivalent to LICQC over the complex space. So what does that mean? So that means you say suppose all, for example, you suppose all the constraints are active. So that means the constraining functions are zero. So diagonals are zero. So when now in this case, when is this guy have a full rank? So that means the radius of the constraining fun functions are linear independent. But of course, if the diagonals are non-zero, it doesn't matter because it's automatically full rank. So, that means, so this one is equivalent to is equivalent to the the uh, the, the AI sequence. But how about the issue? Why? Well, yeah, I would say it's, it's stronger than that, but it requires over the entire the complex space. Okay, so this is a non-singularity. Well, when is non-singularity? So how can we represent the lambda? So okay, is a trick. So you say this is the matrix, this is the C matrix, C matrix. Okay. So here is the issue. If there exists a matrix polynomial Lx, so Lx is a matrix polynomial. Okay. There is non, non, non rational functions. Okay. So that means if Lx is the left inverse of C, so that means you multiply Lx in the left, and it gives identity matrix. So if this one is true, then we are happy. So why? Why you will see? This is Cx times lambda equals the gradient of f, right? You multiply L from the left, so it's cancelled, so you give it identity. So you see, so lambda gives, can represent it as a polynomial function over the critical points. So, so how you do, so that means, so that is, well, now the, now the question is, well, when does there exist? So, when does there exist a polynomial, so this is, that is a, a left inverse of C? So actually, there is actually the, the, the conclusion is very clear. 
So this L exists if and only if uh, the, this the 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 tuple the tuple of the constraining polynomials is non-singular. <coughs> but the non-singular actual well, you see that actually that's the basic result in the HBA geometry. If we have a, a generic system of polynomial equations, then, then it's always non-singular, right? So, so this condition is a, is a generic condition. So and the proof actually is uh, is not too hard. Actually, that is we apply positive standards because it's just because if because you, we we know this uh, this uh, is is always uh, full rank. So that means if you consider if we apply uh, row reductions and many reductions you, you, for each time the the, the, the third column is uh, cannot have common zero. So that is the mass. So that means the, the the constant one belongs to that idea, and we can apply that recursively. So that is. So now let's see some examples. So let's say we consider the hypercubic conditions. So hypercube so it's defined by any quadratic inequalities. Okay, we have, and then we have this actually C. This is a CX. You have this is a gradient. I mean, this is the constraint of And then if you do it, actually, well, this guy is. If you multiply, you verify. This guy is identity. So, I mean, I, I would like to, uh, to to remark that for to to express lambda, we do not need to know the active set. If you know to need to know the active set, that's not convenient because we we don't know what con what constraints are active. But here we don't need to know that. So linear constraints, linear constraints uh, is uh, is similar, but um, I mean the conclusion is the same. For the, if the, all the constraining functions are linear, then, then but we still need this assumption. So this condition is non singular. I mean in this way, well, this is something like that means if, if we consider the polyhedron, that means it requires the polyhedron is non degenerate. Well, but this, I would say this condition is stronger than that because we require that uh, we require the non-degeneracy over the complex space. But how? But in polyhedron, you only care about the, the vertex of the feasible region. Okay. So, so if this guy, well, for the linear case, actually we can get stronger conclusions. So that means is uh, the L. I mean, under this assumption, the L X E always exists. But how we can bound the degree? We can bound the degree. So degree is M minus the rank of A. So what is M? M is the number of the linear constraints. So, so if the, but so but they still you should use the, if there are a lot of linear constraints, then it's bad. So the so degree is high. So these are the linear constraints. And similar, for example, we call, as an example, let's consider simplex. Simplex that means everyone is non-negative. Summation is at most one. Okay, and for this is a CX, and then you can verify this guy is identity matrix. What if LX is this form. But how in this case, you see, I'm, in this case, I'm equals, uh, uh, n, uh, I'm equals m plus 1, so the uh, subtraction equals 1, so the degree is 1. Okay, now let's do the optimization, so that it's, uh, so okay, now here is, uh, this is a polynomial optimization, okay, we can, now here we, we need a subject, we need to make a subject, okay, the, the, the constraining polynomial is non-singular, so that means what, well, then, but the other is that there exists Lx that is from the left. Okay, that is L. That, that, then we, we can express lambda like in this form. Okay. What? Well, in this case, then we need to be very careful. So when we minimize the polynomial, actually, with the KKD condition is not necessary if the feasible set is unbounded. So that means the minimum value, the infinite value is uh, untrue. May not be achievable. Actually, in our first paper, actually we mentioned this issue, right? <laughs> but in our in linear programming, the people don't worry about this. They always assume it is achieved, right? But however, for the polynomial optimization, if uh, is, we we don't know. Actually, this question is uh, is very difficult. So, it's, but here I need to assume it is achievable. Is it not achievable? I don't know. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be very hard. I don't know. It's, so. He said, if it's achievable, then, well, then that's easy. Then we can write down the KD condition. Right? The condition, that issue, okay. <laughs> we write down, that means, okay, these are the original constraints. These are the original constraints. All these are KKD conditions. These are redundant conditions. We are slowly in. So as I mentioned, in polynomial optimization, we never worry about more constraints. The more, the better. Now we add more. We add more because when we apply more, that means we can get better relaxations. So we get it. Because well, the issue is now in this says, I mean, if we the, the, the non-singular, then lambda can be expressed as polynomials. Let me just throw it in. So everything is a polynomial, okay? And then we do it again, and then we apply some moment SLS hierarchy. So we can do it again. So, so and these are the constraints. Actually, this is, uh, here I'd like to, well, I mean, I guess well, I assume all of you guys are, are bored with SLS version. Now here I'd like to present the moment version. So the moment version, that means what? Well, you linearize everything, okay? 
you linearize the polynomial, then you have this, and then you have, I mean, for equations, we have equations, okay? We have linear equation constraints. For the polynomial inequality, then we have localizing matrix to be positive PSD. So these are the localizing matrix. I'm not gonna, I'd like to skip the details. I mean, it's not a fun. It's, so, now what is, so this is a relaxation. That means well, we, 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 we have more uh, constraints. We, we just apply it. So that is. So what is the convergence? Well, I'd like to say the major conclusion is that, so actually this is one, so actually this, uh, let me say. So if the quadratic model of the constraint is Archimedean, then, yeah, then, then this sequence always have finite convergence. So that means, when, but here that means, okay, the, 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 the quadratic model of C is Archimedean, but however, there is no assumption about F. Okay, <coughs> F can, can be uh, uh, very bad, can be very good, can be bad, can be have, uh, can be have for example, infinite many mini methods. So always tight, okay? So yes. But uh, so actually here, well, uh, you got to matter why do we need the Archimedean condition? Because the reason is because here I don't use the preordering. If we use preordering, then this assumption can be removed. Okay, so that means you, we have, so you, you consider here, we have several polynomial inequalities. So if you use the preordering, so we don't use cross products among them. But here, we, I don't use that. So that to avoid that, so that means I need the, the quadratic model to, to be Archimedean. But however, as I say, this condition can still be weakened. For example, actually, I only, for example, if we consider this, uh, the, the KKD set, for example, the KKD set, if this set, for example, is finite or, is, or, or has some other properties, I mean, is, then you can, but that one is, that is a clean condition. Okay, this is a clean condition. But however, can, this can, uh, something can still be weakened, okay? <coughs> and uh, also, I mean, and also there's another problem you may hear, what I mean is what, because this is the minimum value is not known, how do we, how do we know this value is tight or not? Well, that means what, we can apply flat extension or flat truncation. I mean, that is, we consider the minimize of this guy, we apply to, to consider a, a subsequence of what? And then you check the run condition. Actually, there is the result. If the, if the set of minimizers is finite, then we are happy. If the set is, is not finite, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's no conclusion. So, Jimon, is this the, is the variety, uh, does this sort of assumption mean that the variety is going to be finite? Or is something? It's bounded. Actually, I don't, I, well, actually, the assumption can be weakened to this. This one is bounded. Just bounded. And yeah, that, yeah. Finite. Well, you, you just bound it is okay. Actually, this kind is, is Archimedean. If, if you consider this as a set, as a set of constraints, if you assume this one is Archimedean, then it's good. But here, I mean, here, that mean, I write it because this one is clean, okay? It's, it only depends on the, the C. But here, if I hear that means it depends on F, it's not a very fine. So, but yes, you're right. We don't need to define it. So if this one, we consider the other constra uh, constraining polynomials here. If the quadratic model is Archimedean, that's the same conclusion true. Okay, the same conclusion true. But here, then, but how, what, well, I mean, the, 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 but the, 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 the thing is here is that it depends on F. If the objective is uh, not, not very fiable. So that is, uh, in application, is not convenient. But, but how, if that conclusion is very clear. So we all need to accept with the, 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 the constraint polynomials is, is Archimedean. Okay? For example, we minimize the polynomial over the hypercube. So you always have fun. If you use this hierarchy, then you always have a finite convergence. So no matter the object is good or bad, it doesn't matter. So. Did I answer your question or is that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah. For the hypercube, we have to anyway. Huh? That is asymptotic convergence. No. For the hypercube, we have to anyway. For the discrete hypercube? No. No, that's not true. That's because of Schreiner's result. If the, if the dimension, no, that's not true. It's finite, right? That's not hypercube. I don't know because the name, that's not hypercube. That's, that's not, no, 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 no. Oh, I see, I see. So it's, uh, I would say, in my, this is uh, hi, the standard hypercube, yeah, yeah, right? Sorry. I mean, that is, <laughs> that is what Boolean, I don't, that would be, is about to be called a Boolean set. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, if the study is finite, then it's, I uh, mean, Monica Lorne has a long work, uh, that is obvious, right? That is. So this is, uh, let me say, this is, uh, I would say this condition can be weakened, but how this is, is neat, it only depends on the, the constraints, so. 
Now let's see some uh, examples. So, yes. <laughs> what I have to say. Okay, the example we need to be very careful. If we choose a random polynomial, the let's say the original direction is already tight, so there is no advantage. But how, here I choose some special polynomials. Okay. <laughs> so this one is, no, just, you can see this one is Moskin. So this guy is, plus, well, the reason is that the Moskin polynomial is, has infinite many, many methods. Okay, that's better. So that's why, because I want to, to make sure it's detectable. So that's why I, I add this coercive term. Okay, that's the reason. So that is uh, why I mean, everything is satisfied and do it, and then you will see the bound. Actually, for the k equals three or four, the direct, I mean, if you don't, because this set is unbounded. So this guy is, uh, the, 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 the classical moment that's how the direct is infeasible. Oh, what do you mean? Not in field. It's on board from below. Okay, it's on board from below. But how it goes five? Actually, what well, this is a numeric issue. I'm not sure it's really infeasible or not because it's very big. Because for numeric issue, I cannot tell. But for this one, it looks like uh, if we apply the Lagrangian multiplier, then it works uh, fast. Actually, well, it, I mean, it, well, numerically. But well, here, everything is about numerical because uh, we can we don't know the STB cannot be so exact. I mean, that is. So it's, uh, but how actually is, uh, so this is one example, so let's see, there is another one. So this guy is called the, something like a Robinson polynomial, but I, I replaced x i squared by x, okay? So that is, uh, so, but here this is, um, is non-negative, here is some, what, well, these are non-linear constants. I want to, uh, the, uh, the example to be more interesting. So if you, this is the L, is, or you can just do it, and still exist, the minimum value, okay, this is a comparison. I mean, for k equals two, where well, I still k equals two, there is no advantage. But for k equals three, then it's uh, it's big. Okay. So that, I mean, k equals three is uh, is tight numerically. Okay. So let's say for equals three. So this. Uh, well, actually, this one. Well, if you see the the Rosenik's uh, paper about the survey of some squares. So this polynomial is very interesting. Actually, this polynomial is non-active, and it has a lot of minimizers. It has a lot of if you have uh, why if you are interested in test on performance on polynomial command, this, this polynomial is very good. It's, it's non-active and it's, it has a lot of minimizers. And here, I mean here I, I if I added a coercive term here, so I still have this many. If I don't have this, I don't know, maybe it's infinite many. I, I don't I did not think about it because this this polynomial is very tough. And then if you just do it, of course the, the feasible region is non-compact, but how we have a coercive term here. So. And if we just apply it, so we, got, we have actually we have eleven minimizers. Well, it's not symmetric. Okay, it's not. It's not the mean. The set of minimizers is not symmetric. So it's eleven. So it's not even. So, it's, so you see, this is a comparison. So we have. Well, if we, we if we don't use lambda, okay, then we have this. If you use lambda, then you converge very quickly. So it's okay. Second one is already. Actually, the time is also less. It's a bit less. So it's. So the reason is, as I mentioned, okay, in polynomial optimization. We want more constraints. Okay, the more the better. So actually, don't worry. Even you, even if you see that computational time actually is, is less, when we add more constraints, the so computational time is is less. It's not more. Right? So okay, let's see this one. This one. What well, this? Oh, this polynomial I guess is also from Rusnik's paper. <coughs> so this is uh, is not sum of squares. Right? It's not like but not sum of squares. Anyway, for this constraint, so it's uh, well, we can verify that L exists, so you can express it, so we do it, so that you, the so minimum value is zero, actually, but we can, we, we can verify exactly, so, but how you for numerical performance, we have this, okay, so, you see converge very fast, so, mm. but you can see, the time, well, it does not cost more, you see, or even less, I mean, but not too much, because, well, we, have, we still have, uh, the, the polynomials. Anyway. Okay, now let's summarize this. So the conclusion is that, so let me summarize, so lambda here, the virtue you need to use, the trick is lambda. Okay, we express lambda as a polynomial function, okay, over the critical points. But how, well, how about this assumption? So we need to assume the constraint, the, 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 the set of constraint polynomials is non singular, but this assumption is a genetic assumption. So it's and use, well, then we use this expression, we just do it, okay, we, we get more constraints. Okay. As a new concept, we have finite convergence under some conditions. But these conditions on the C, for example, if the feasible set is quite, is is Archimedean, that is done. Okay. What is it? But not that is not. Did you ever define Archimedean in the start? No. Would you? Agree? I guess I assumed all. 
<laughs> all of you yeah, are experts. Somebody does know the definition of marketing. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, if you don't know, then consult me, okay? I have less than it, okay? So, yes. Uh, but you, you are not happy about this? <laughs> okay, I can explain it. Okay, we have enough time. So, yes. Okay. So, yes. Uh, okay, so we just use the expression, we just plug it in. Okay, and then I have five of So, well, I'd like to mention that. So, that means uh, the, the construction use the KD condition. KD condition, well, it depends on the objective. So sometimes this is not useful, but sometimes it can be not convenient. So that is also a disadvantage. I mean, there is no free lunch. Okay. So it's uh, in mind. So it depends on use the objective. But we, but on the other hand, we minimize something. We should use the objective function. And if we don't use that, how can we minimize? Right. So that is also another argument. So there is another issue. That is uh, what I'd like to mention that actually I I, have, I, have, well, I guess uh, many of us have spent a long time. How to construct a uniform STP? That's a all optim polyform optimization. So we spend a lot of time. Actually, that is not possible. So it's by the by the result of class Schroeder. So I should keep aim even for the, the cone of non-negative polynomials. That is not some squares. So that there so is no STP representation. So that means we cannot we, for even for that case we cannot solve it. So that. but however, if we use the objective, then it's possible. So that is anyway. So that's it. So I finish my talk. Thank you very much. I think we have enough uh, time for questions, so let me try the boring group method one more time. Being European, now I'm going to put my European hat on and try some good old-fashioned age discrimination. Okay, so anybody <laughs> age 33 and under, you can ask, okay, this is chronological age. So if you are 33 under, or you think you're 33 and under, <laughs> you can ask a question to Jia Wang, and I have already one question in mind that you can ask him. <laughs> How old he is? <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, I'm one decade older than that. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Want to <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to ask about the definition of non-Archimedean? What's the definition of a non-Archimedean quadratic module? Please define. Uh, non-Archimedean. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, Archimedean quadratic. <laughs> no, Archimedean is harder. So Archimedean is... Uh, <laughs> I saw this is Archimedean. So that means is, uh, we have, say, C. C, I mean, they are all polynomials. The, uh, is, this guy is Archimedean. If there exists a polynomial P, and I mean, all these guys are sum of squares. Okay, they exist. The sum of squares, sigma zero, sigma one through sigma. So that, so this set is compact. Because that means they exist one Putina type of representation, such that this single inequality, this single inequality gives a compact set. Or I mean, that actually, that, that, that's actually the equivalent condition. Oh, this one is equivalent to this. this there exists some scalar R minus the summation of squares of x i s belongs to belongs to the quadratic module. So that means this guy is uh, this equals this form. So in other words, so you exist some r minus the sum minus the sum of squares of x. So it can be represented this way. So that okay. Now that we know how old uh, <laughs> Jia Wang and Cynthia are, anybody <laughs> four, 44 and younger interested in asking a question? <laughs> Another question. Real question. So, yeah. I have, uh, so in this, can you go back to the theorem you had with uh, f, uh, where you was, that you used this Archimedean? Yes. You said that if the quadratic module is Archimedean. So this is only one. Uh, uh, let me see. If the quadratic module is Archimedean and no other assumptions, then for every objective function, yes. every objective polynomial. Yeah. Does that say that then the the semi-algebraic set is a projection of a spectrohedron? No. No. 
Because I, you, you see the contrast here, that means you, the, you, you look at the constituent here, it depends on us. So the, you see the constituent, the, it depends on us, do you see? It's K depends on us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, it's a K depends. So that means the feasible circuit depends on F. So that means it's. Uh, it's otherwise, otherwise it's the con close strand that we have trouble with you. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on F. So that means my construction depends on the objective. But for a given semi algebraic set, you know, you, you only need so many polynomials to define it. So to define it, but here the issue here is minimize. Here the issue is to minimize the. To minimize the function, that's different. You, 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 you minimize one, you, don't, you only need to care about a, a subset of it, right? So. But here, is obviously, this one is only sufficient, and it can be vegan, but however, it's, it's neat. So, that is. So, the reason, you for, for, the reason for using Archimedes is, is that we don't use the pre ordering. So, that means because we, have, we might have several inequality constraints. So, we don't use that. If you don't use that, that means we need to use Archimedes condition. But however, actually, so actually, there is another version of the theorem I did not present. So that means if we use, if uh, we are allowed to use the preordering, then we, then we don't have assumption. So we, then we can remove this assumption. So that means. Okay. Yeah. So if we can remove this assumption, irrespective of chronological age, anybody is invited <laughs> to ask question. Yes, Sean. Sure, yeah. So. But in our representation, in fact, it is, you can see the sum of square weights in the computing uh, Yeah, yes. As polynomial in X, which yeah. are behave like uh, Lagrange multipliers. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. In fact, here you do more because you, you, you put explicitly the, the KKT optimality condition as yeah. constraints. Yeah, yes. But it's a, it's the, the, advantage, I mean, the advantage is that there is a. Well, if we can think that, yeah, that's, that, that is uniform degree bound for that. But if, but if we use if you use the original uh, Purina uh, representation, there is, there is no uniform degree bound on that. So that's why we, in the first case, we have we have only asymptotical convergence. So that that's the difference. So I mean, there, no, this is proved by Schneider. I mean, by Schneider. For example, minimize the Moseley polynomial over the unit ball. So it does not have a finite convergence. So he proved that. But numerically. That's different now, okay. Numerically, you, you convert in two steps. <laughs> okay, any others? Not, then we'll thank the speaker again. And, uh, <laughs> a long break now, the next talk is at 3.30.